I know this gift looks like a drill, but it's actually a cake. Because that's what I do. I make cakes that don't look like cakes. Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm gonna show you how I made a cake of a Christmas present that is so realistic, I bet you thought it was a real gift. The first thing that I'm dying to work on is the edible Christmas bow. So I'm just taking a real bow and I'm tearing it apart a bit. <laughs> I wanna see how this thing works, how it's put together. So it looks like it's just one long strip of continuous loops, continuous loops, continuous loops, continuous loops. And we've got a staple in the center that's holding everything together. To make an edible version, I'm using a sugar sheet. The real bow is a half an inch wide, so I'm going to cut my sugar sheet into half inch thick strips that are the longest length of the sugar sheet. Do you know what a sugar sheet is? A sugar sheet is a piece of edible paper that is made of sugar and cornstarch. And I'm sure there's other secret ingredients in there that I don't know. I'm a cake maker, not a sugar paper maker. So basically it's a sweet sheet of sugar that tastes like vanilla. I know this stuff is somewhat flexible and as you can see, you can cut it with scissors or a blade. So I think it's my best edible option to recreate this bow. My strips are cut. So now I make loops. Because this is a sugar sheet, a tiny bit of water is all you need to make sure that that loop sticks. I just fold one end over the other. It looks like one of those awareness ribbons. Actually, I think that's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's one of those awareness ribbon loops. So now I fold the strip again and I make another loop. I wanna let you guys know that this is pure intuition here. Not exactly sure I know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of looping and hoping. I think I'm on the right track. So now I'll add a second and third layer of loops. Can we do a loop montage, please? Goodness, you guys. All this looping is totally worth it because it looks awesome. It looks like the real thing. I love it so much. So now I'm adding my final loops and a few single loops so that I can fill in the top. I've made so many cakes in my time, like so many cakes, but I'm not kidding. This might be my proudest moment. This legitimately looks like a bow. Like I could put this on a gift nobody would know. It would be amazing. I don't know what to say. I'm so excited. Check out this mug. This is a Sidesurf Cake Studio mug. You can get one too at shop.sidesurfcakes.com. And if you're left-handed, just images on both sides and get your own. Now the shape is there, but it's a little matte. So it's a little less flashy than your typical Christmas bow. So I'm adding a little gold shimmer powder to liven it up a bit. What is this? You see these loops? Now look at this loop. What is happening here? Why is this loop so much more reflective than the others? The light is shining off of it like a gorgeous satin. Hang, hang on, I gotta test something out. A little shimmer powder on this side. A little shimmer powder on that side. And there's a huge difference. You probably can't see it, but one side of the sugar sheet is smoother than the other, and it's reflecting light way more like a Christmas bow. I'm not gonna put you through another loop montage. So here is the second edible bow that I made. Only this time I made it shiny side up. This is a huge difference. The one on the left looks matte like a paper and the one on the right looks satiny smooth. I mean, I think this is a huge difference. What do you think? I literally wrapped my real drill like a gift so that I could use it as a reference when I sculpt this cake. I laid the drill flat onto some parchment paper, then I trace around it with a pen and I'll cut it out. This will give me the perfect drill-shaped stencil that I can use to carve my cake layers. Why would I eyeball it when I have a perfectly good gift-wrapped drill with the perfect proportions? Now I just place that stencil onto the cake and I carve around with a serrated knife.
I cut out two layers of cake into that drill shape. Now I just stack the cake with my signature green buttercream between the layers. Thanks to my drill stencil, the top view of my cake is already looking good. So now I just have to round out some corners and give the cake a little dimension. Then I cover the entire cake in a thin layer of light green buttercream. This buttercream is light green because I had leftover green buttercream and I had leftover white buttercream and I mixed them together. <laughs> then I got a little lazy and I didn't want to dirty more dishes. So instead of adding food color, I left it light green. I was having a hard time reaching some of those tight corners of the drill. So I busted out this mini spatula. So cute. Mini spatula did the trick. It helped me clean up those hard to reach areas. I'm covering this cake in red modeling chocolate. So I just roll it out and then I place it onto my cake. I'm working the chocolate into the shape of my cake and I trim away any excess chocolate. So the cake is the basic shape of a drill, but not a gift wrapped drill. To make it look as if this drill is covered in wrapping paper, I'm just sculpting some folds and some wrinkles into the red modeling chocolate. I know there's some people out there who might think that sculpting fabric in chocolate might be a little boring, but I really like it. I get to zone out and just push the chocolate around and morph it into random shapes. There are no rules. What do you want to look like, little chocolate corner? You want to have a soft edge? You want to have a hard edge? You can do whatever you want. It's your world. For the drill bit area, I want it to look as if the wrapping paper is twisted around the bit. So I'm leaving a little nub of chocolate to represent that. Then I just sculpt some lines to emphasize that twisted gathered paper. I think I have an idea. I have small scraps of edible plastic laying around from a previous cake. And I think I can use these edible scraps to make edible tape. Now my edible tape has to have that zigzagged ripped edge. So I'm placing the edible plastic into a real tape dispenser and I'm ripping. I am so happy this worked. It's the best edible tape ever. Now I just have to cut it into thinner strips with some scissors. This is one of those details that I get way excited for. Now I have to answer a very important question. Who is this gift for? I'm taking an edible pen and some edible paper and I'm writing to Side Surf Cakes fans from Santa. <laughs> Now let's assemble all the goods. A little water will make this tape stick. Yes, this cake would be fine without the tape, but I think that it's one of those super tiny subtle details that a lot of people are gonna appreciate. And last, the edible bow and tag. And there you have it, a Christmas gift cake. I still can't get over that bow. It reminds me of my childhood. I bet it reminds you of your childhood too. And if you're a child right now, then you're gonna know what I mean in about 10 years. <laughs> All right, let's cut the cake. It is so strange to expect an object to be hard and then you see a knife cut into a soft, squishy cake. <laughs> this cake turned out even better than I thought it would. I really, really like it. It's, it's the full package and a gift package with all the packages. If you like this cake, give this video a like and subscribe to this channel right now because I post a brand new realistic cake every week. I'll see you next week for another cake. <laughs>